Welcome to my garden. Well, this is what it looked like three years ago. It was basically one giant concrete bunker and this is what it looks like now. My garden is basically a tiny shady-ish courtyard. It has parts of sun and parts of shade throughout. Over the three years I've learnt what it really likes um, and I have various collections of favourite plants that like these sort of conditions. Down here I've got a really lovely Pyrrhus japonica collection with a lovely red astilbe at the front. I try and plant things in sort of colour formations. Um, it's a bit me just being picky basically and it means that I do have to move things around when they flower and when they're in just leaf formation. But the nice thing about all of these pyrrhus is that they have beautiful pink leaves when they're growing and they keep their colour throughout the winter. This japonica at the back here with the beautiful uh, red and green berries comes alive and has um, lovely kind of white flowers as well. Moving round into the shadiest corner, you've got a camellia at the back which produces really, really spectacular pink flowers a nice bit of winter colour and the rest of the year has these lovely glossy green leaves and at the front here we've got some hardy flowers that just come back every year so some dianthus and then the lovely kind of begonia types and then in the depths of the corner over here we've got a really special fern zone it is far too full but um, I asked my seven-year-old to prune it back and she did a really lovely job and we ended up with these monster ferns. The most special is this beautiful Japanese painted fern. They all sit under this Asa. It's Asa Jordan and it's a smaller variety, but it's really stunning. It has these beautiful kind of lime green leaves when they first arrive in spring, and then they get darker and through to autumn, they go a kind of pinky rust color. And when all the leaves drop off, you get quite a dramatic tree formation kind of see it there. It has a big V essentially and this one that kind of branches right off to the sky. I'm going to just hop up on my wall so that you can see on top of my shed roof which is a sedum roof. Lots of varieties growing on it and because our kitchen is on a slightly higher level you can see all of this from the kitchen. Heading back down, along this back border we have some evergreens that don't mind a bit of shade. So we have some lovely hellebores, a cordyline, and then some ajuja, which has kind of taken over a little bit this year but I quite like the way it kind of trails over. And our little bug hotel, which sometimes has some solitary bees that like this kind of bamboo setup, and it has its own little sedum roof. We've got a lovely euphorbia here, and then the corner centerpiece is our loquat, which is an absolute beast. And you can kind of hack away at it 
and it keeps coming back for more but has a really lovely kind of structure to it. Hidden in this corner we've tried to create a little habitat for creepy corallies so a nice little woodland glen with some heathers and also a secret pond. It's tiny but the wildlife loves it and we get some beautiful water snails and other kind of skating bugs which are always interesting to look at. And because lockdown wouldn't be lockdown without growing a bit of fruit and veg, one of our neighbours very kindly gave us a squash plant. So we're seeing how we're getting on with that. We also have some chilies and some basil and some lovely sweet peas for colour. Contrary to what people think, things like bananas can actually survive in the ground and you don't need a conservatory to grow them. This is a banana and I hacked it right down to the ground in the winter and it's decided the time is now and it's come up and it's really dramatic. It'll get a lot higher than this and form some shade for those plants underneath. This is similar to the beautiful canna lilies that you can see just beginning to poke up here. This kind of dramatic red stripy leaf and here you've got a yellowy green stripy leaf. Down at the front here we've got a Brunera which I have a love-hate relationship with because it's got this spectacular leaf pattern but it's prickly and it irritates my skin and it grows gigantic and it also has some blue flowers which I'm not that keen on but I love that it springs from nothing. It literally dies back to absolutely nothing. You think it's died and then this. So it can definitely stay. In the kind of hottest part of my bed, I've got some Carex and another tiny pond here, which we created out of a mop bucket, planting some marginals in the little area where you would drain your mop. Uh, just last week we had a damselfly come and see this and we have some tiny birds that come and stand on the edge and drink from it. So even though it's tiny, it's definitely worth having. On the wall, I grow some of the things that the slugs and snails really like to eat. So we have a French marigold here which miraculously has survived because our slugs and snails are vicious. And then over here, we've got a magnolia tree, which has never been happier, despite the fact that it's in a pot and would probably love to be in the ground. And in some of these pots, they're a bit experimental. So this one here, I copied Monty's idea on Gardener's World of doing a bulb lasagna and absolutely packed it full of bulbs. And they all came up at different times and looked really lovely in their own right, but they weren't quite the um, show that Monty puts on, but never mind. This pot here is a bit more of a wild flower set up which the bees really like. So we have a lovely trolleus and also a wild digitalis and then other things that I just love like these delicate gems and you can see here I've got more canna leaves popping up out of the soil. Over here we've got a little kind of sedum alpine zone. This is 
one of my lockdown projects. I was given this old printing tray because it has woodworm in so it wouldn't be suitable in the house. But I've packed it with some soil and stuffed some alpines in it and it seems to be doing okay. Up on my wall this is all aimed at bees so we've got some white lavender and then some hebes, pink fizz and this one is red edge. You can kind of see it takes on this lovely red pinky red to the edge of its leaves and then we have some more sweet peas growing up the downpipe and a hanging basket where I've used a moss one so I've poked holes in it and underplanted it with some fuchsia and these are all from last year and they've come back nice and happy and in the top we've got a trailing begonia which is just coming into its own but it has amazing sort of corally flowers and then over to the final part of my garden back to the door we have this spectacular aeonium which i underplanted with begonia and again they've come back in full force and Believe it or not, I didn't take this Aeonium in, in the winter, because we don't really have space for it. But I don't really get frost here, and it survived, and it's looking amazing, and I love it. And then we have some things that just collectively form nice colours together, so there's Berberus, and I treated myself to a few coleus from the hardware shop, and they're hiding in there adding a lovely bit of colour. And over here, this produces beautiful red flowers in the very early spring, so you get some lovely colour. And then my tree here is a salix or a flamingo tree as we know it because it gets these beautiful pink tinges to it and it's been grafted onto a tree stem so it's nice and high and the birds have finally trusted us and they come over and see it and that's it my tiny garden I'll just take a step up and show you the whole um, panorama. Hope to see you next year.